May the grace and the peace of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with each and every one of you as I welcome you again to another day of fellowship with us right here at the In God's Grace Ministries. Now, if you are joining us here, it's because probably you haven't yet made it to number 307 Southern Main Road, Kunopia, where we are located. And we are inviting each and every one of you all to come and join with us. Come and join with an awesome church family. Come and join and become an awesome part of the body of Christ. Remember, we are a Bible-believing, gospel-preaching church. We believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ for salvation. So come join with us. We have a lot of areas of ministry also, you know, of which you would be informed. I'm certainly that you have been informed that we have a vibrant women's ministry, men's ministry, youth ministry, along with so many other things. All right, so come join with us and come and experience an awesome time in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to give a shout out to a couple people also to the events. Just next of Friday, Sam Bridal Rooster. Top of the morning to you and your family. Right to pastors here um, who we affiliate with um, Christ Redemption Ministries, Pastor Anna, City of God, Pastor Sean, along with so many other pastors. I know that um, so, so numerous to mention. Pastor Rich is now there in VA. You know, and to all of you all who support this ministry, to Brother Brendan Ashby. You know, may God bless you all, man, and thanks for thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Sister Trisha, Sister Shelley, right? And so many of you guys, you know, to my very own sons and daughters also out there. You know, I pray that God continues to strengthen and bless and keep each and every one of you. To my family in church here, you know, God is doing a marvelous and an awesome work with you guys. You know, Sister Shanid, Brother Keen. Brother Christopher, Sister Dani, Sister China, and Sister Amy who handle youth ministry online, right? As well as, you know, we, I mean, Sister Shanid and they did doing an awesome job. Sister Shanid did such an awesome job on Friday night with those kids out there. It's just an amazing thing that God is doing with this ministry. So, you know, I pray that you all come join with us. You know, come participate. Um, Sister Annie and all of you all who were involved in the Sip and Queen weekend before. God bless you all. Listen now, the women had an awesome sip and paint there the other day, you know. If you see the artistry of these women. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, so may God bless you all. May God bless you all to all of you all who are listening in right now. We have an awesome area of scripture and ministry coming up right there. It is going to be an awesome, inspiring word. So stay tuned. Amen. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Solomon De La Rosa in God's grace. Pleasant good morning, one and all. I am Sinead Cyrus here with the In God's Grace Ministries, and I'm here to tell you all about our upcoming events and also to give you some information on the services that we have available. So we have our Sunday service that begins at 9.30 a.m. both on the online platform and in the physical building which is located at number 307 Southern Main Road, Kunupi. The services start at 9.30 a.m. The online service lasts for about an hour and a half so it finishes at 10.30 and the physical building starts at 9.30 a.m. and finishes at 11.30 a.m. On a Tuesday, we have our train ride to heaven, right, which is located at number 6, Kunam Chase Chinchin Road, Kunupi, and this is a Bible study that is geared towards explaining the gospel, explaining what is salvation, and it's an opportunity for you all to come with your questions, and we will sit and discuss anything that you all would like to know, right, from the Bible. We also have our Wednesday night prayer and Bible study, and this we are having, I am we are having an awesome time in this bible study right we are in the book of matthew right now and the amount of information that we are gaining from this bible study is just amazing we are having an amazing time and i want to just invite you all to just make the effort to come out on our wednesday night even if you cannot make it on the tuesday night come out on the wednesday night and get the information because it's a lot it's very heavy it's very deep and you know it's an it's a opportunity for you to get to understand jesus christ a bit more also, we have a Thursday night service, which is every other Thursday, which is called the Knowledge of the Word segment. And this is an online Bible study. And we just, we are catering for people who probably cannot come out of the house to, 
to make it to the physical building we also have the online service which is on thursday right on a friday the youths are having a marvelous time in the building they are there from 7 p.m till about half eight and they are having a wonderful time playing games getting the word in worshiping right and we, there are also refreshments provided these children are having a wonderful wonderful time so if you all have any young kids any youths in the area your neighbor please tell them send them to the same building number 307 Road, Kunupia. send them so that they could have an awesome time in the presence of the lord as well our woman ministry held our sip and paint last week and it was amazing any any person who was present there you all feel free to ask them we had an amazing time right some of us you know some of us didn't know we have that among the skills actually right sister annie sister holder sister joan and sister barbara you all did fantastic right because these ladies were worried that they didn't have the artistic skills and they did have a marvelous job i just want to encourage you all to become a part of our women ministry right become a part of any event that we are having in church we have a lot of events coming up for the summer vacation i just want you all to just get re reach out to any one of us right and get in touch get the information call find out if you want to be a part of it just join us right so we just want to thank you all and i hope you all enjoy enjoy the service have a great morning good day everyone my name is kerry and and today i'll be doing the daily reading which is taken from colossians chapter 4 verses 5 to 6 and it says Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Let me repeat that one more time. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Thank you and have a wonderful day.
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, um, thanks for that awesome area scripture reading there and the announcements there from Sister Sinead and Sister Kerry and, and all else who have participated. And I hope you all enjoy some of the footage that you're seeing there also. Amen. I was just to show you some of the stuff that's going on here. All right. Um, to the turn your Bibles to the book of Second Kings, chapter thirteen. Uh, we will be taking our reading from there. Actually, that is the scriptures that we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be looking at the scriptures from that chapter. All right. Um, and um, you don't want to share something with you. I want to share something with you. But let's just let's just pray for a minute here before we go through them. Father God, I give you thanks and I give you praise even for bringing us here together today, O oh Lord God, for keeping us together from a distance. You know, we thank you for the for the social media platform that we have here, which is able to breach distances, O oh Lord God, and to keep everyone informed and to keep everyone edified and to keep everyone growing, O oh Lord God, and keep everyone encouraged by your word. I thank you for the word that is about to come forth today, and I ask, O oh Lord God, that it not only edifies but elevates also. I pray, O oh Lord God, for encouragement to take place. I pray for the awesome application of your word, O oh Lord God, to take place in the lives of so many people right now to cause change to come about, O oh Lord God. As we even place a, an atmosphere of healing, O oh Lord God, around right now, that wherever it is needed, that it shall be received, O oh Lord God. We thank you for that deliverance also in the atmosphere, also, oh God, and we thank you for the breakthrough that we are about to experience in the awesome and in the almighty name of your Son, Christ in Jesus. We thank you for protecting us thus far, for bringing us to this point of the week, also, God, for taking us through the last week. And we ask, oh God, that you continue to navigate our paths. Be that light on our feet, oh Lord God. As we give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' almighty and in his master's name, we ask you to protect our sons and our daughters, our children, from all hurt harm, from the pestilences about the land, oh Lord God, and from every evil encouragement and enticement of the enemy. Oh God, we rebuke it right now in Jesus' name. Keep them pure and keep them, oh Lord God, covered in you. We ask, oh Lord God, to keep them strong and abiding in the wood, tied, oh God, unable to be moved in Jesus' name. Father God, we lift up the In God's Grace Ministries also and we ask you, oh Lord God, to continue to cause it to increase. Oh Lord God, we ask you to continue to cause it to grow. We ask you, oh Lord God, to continue to cover it by Jesus Christ. We ask you, oh Lord God, for its longevity, for its for its, its strength, oh Lord God, for its membership, oh Lord God, for stability. We ask you to be the lamp and the light unto its feet and its path in Jesus' almighty name. We ask for its protection from all incurrence, oh Lord God, from all insurgents, oh Lord God, from every 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 plan of the enemy right now. We rebuke it, oh Lord God. We cover this ministry. We cover all under the ministry, all under the name of the In God's Grace Ministry, also, oh Lord God. And we thank you for what you're doing there in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, may God bless you all. And I pray that wherever wherever you need that healing right now, that it begins to just take place. Amen. Wherever you need that deliverance right now, that it begins to just take place. Wherever you need that that change takes place, that that turnaround takes place in your life, that it begins to take place, that that restoration begins to take place, that that reconciliation begins to take place. Wherever you need that peace of God in your life right now, I pray that it begins to take place. I declare that it is already taking place in your life. Every situation where there has been turmoil, every situation where there has been there has been violence, every situation that has caused you any aggravation right now, be removed in the awesome name of Jesus Christ. We break down and destroy every high tower and every altar of the enemy in your lives and in your surroundings in the awesome name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, take a look with me at um, the book of Second Kings, chapter thirteen. Let me give you a second to get there. Let me give you a second to get there. One. You should be there. All right, now you know. Friday gone there. I had the awesome, awesome opportunity, as always, to be there witnessing the youth ministry take place. Amen. <laughs> now you know, they had an exercise there Friday night, right? Sister China had an exercise there Friday night, where the kids were paired off, and there was an obstacle course course created for them. Now the thing about the obstacle course is one had to take the other through the course, right? 
one was able to see and the other was not able to see so the other one either had to close their eyes or be blindfolded so they had no vision as to where they were going and it was so awesome to see them participate in this thing that they completed the course successfully right being led by their friend or whoever was the other person there it was so awesome to see what they did you know what i mean that they, they they understood the instructions and they completed the course amen <laughs> hallelujah i just wanted to share that with you for a minute so we're in the book of second kings chapter 13 and i want you to read with me i am reading from the king james vision all right top of the morning to everyone out there again amen hallelujah all right um and it starts in with this one now we have 25 verses to cover here. In the three and twentieth year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel in Samaria and reigned 17 years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin, he departed not therefrom. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he delivered them into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, all their deeds. And Jehoaz besought the Lord, and the Lord hearkened unto him, for he saw the oppression of Israel, because the king of Syria oppressed them. Verse 7. Neither did he leave of the people of Jehoaz to Jehoaz, but fifty horsemen and ten chariots and ten thousand footmen for the king of Syria had destroyed them and had made them like the dust by threshing. Now verses five and six are bracketed verses, right? Which if you read at the same point in time, it can take you off the path and the direction what verses four would have brought you to verses seven or verses four and seven have to connect directly. So verses five and six says this. And the Lord gave Israel a savior so that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians and the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam who made Israel sin, but walked therein. And there remained the groove also in Samaria. All right. So we're going from verses 8 now. So it says, Now the rest of the acts of Jehoaz and all that he did and his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Joel slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Joash's son reigned in his stead. Joash's son reigned in his stead. Now, in the thirty and seventh year of Joash king of Judah, began Jehoash the son of Jehoaz to reign over Israel in Samaria. And reigned sixteen years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all of the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, but he walked therein. And the rest of the acts of Joash. And all that he did, and his might, wherewith he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah. Are they not written in the books of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Joash slept with his fathers, and Jeroboam sat upon the throne. And Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now Elisha was fallen sick of the sickness, wherein he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him, and wept over his face, and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thy hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance and the arrow of the deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in effect till thou have consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him and said, Thou should have smitten five or six times. Then had thou smitten Syria till thou had consumed it. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. And Elisha died. And they buried him. And all the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold they spied a band of men. And they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived. And stood up on his feet. But Hazel king of Syria oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoaz. And the Lord was gracious unto them and had compassion on them and had respect unto them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
and would not destroy them, neither cast he them from his presence as yet. So Hazael king of Syria died, and Benadad his son reigned in his stead, and Jehuash the son of Jehuash took again out of the hand of Benadad the son of Hazael the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehuash his father by war. Three times did Joash beat him and recovered the cities of Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we really need your, 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 your assistance here right now. We really need you right now to give us understanding, wisdom, knowledge, and to bring application to the scriptures here. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this is a this is an area here where I'm sitting that a lot of people may have heard of before. You know where Elisha told um, the king to strike the ground with the with the, the bows, strike the ground with the bows, and you might have heard so many different applications of the word of God concerning this. And you know the thing about it is that you know sometimes it, you know what confuses a lot of people when they started to read about these kings and the kings and the kings and the kings and they started well yeah well let me make it simple for you. There were two kings of Joash named the Joash, right? There was a king of Israel named Joash and there was a king of Israel named Joash, right? Now remember at this point in time the kingdom is split. It is not the united commonwealth of Israel again it is Israel Israel and Judah. Right? The kingdom was split after Jeroboam took the throne after King Solomon, so Israel is split into two kingdoms, a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. So there's a King Joash in the northern and there's a King Joash in the southern called Judah. Israel is in northern. Right? To simplify it for you. Now, all of these events and all of these players in this event here, right, were named way long before in First Kings chapter 19 verses 15. I don't know if you recall that. All right, what took place in the book of First Kings chapter 19, 15 was this. Now listen carefully here. Yeah? Because I'm, I'm gonna take it as a matter of fact, you all turn the pages over there. Right? What happened in the book of First Kings chapter 19 is this. Elijah, not Elisha, this year is Elisha we're dealing with, right? This is Elisha. Elijah had destroyed the prophets of Baal and um Ahab went and he told the Jezebel. No, you know he, he was a tell tell. So he tell Jezebel, you know, um Elijah kill everybody and what and what and what and Jezebel now say you know I'm going to kill Elijah by morning he did so Elijah goes to hide in this cave so Elijah hiding in this cave and while Elijah is hiding in this cave the Lord come and start a council and intervene with Elijah and asking him what is you doing in this cave Elijah you need to come out of this cave this cave so he tells Elijah Elijah to go and do a certain work for some form about First Kings nineteen fifteen. Let's get there. Right? First Kings nineteen fifteen. Here what takes place. Right? Here what takes place from First Kings nineteen fifteen. And the Lord said unto him, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. Alright, so he tells Elijah to go back to Damascus to Syria. Now the thing about it is Elijah traveled forty one days. One day and then he traveled when he rested that one day the angel came and he woke up with the, the the um the big coal the coal the bake on the coals and the cruiser water by itself would cause them now to travel for the next 40 days and 40 nights as the scripture says right and that's where he ended up in this wilderness here and all of that so god is telling him come out from where you are right and the same thing as as god telling elijah come out from where you are i'm telling some of you all who have traveled too far into the wilderness that you all are in right now to come out from where you are you feel where i'm coming from because some of us are in a place right now where we feel that as if we have been deserted but just we haven't been deserted we're just we who have taken the trek to go into the area of wilderness where we are if you run back from it's not it's not like god hasn't deserted you know because god came to elijah in this place and i'm telling him to come out of the place come out of the emotional place that some of you all in some of you all are in some bad places emotionally come out right now in the name of jesus so god tells elijah he says come out of the way and go so Come out of where you are, all right, and go. And he says, and when thou come, at, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, and Jehu the son of Nimshi shall thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Mohala shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room in his place. So these persons here, who God has directed Elijah to go and anoint, are the same persons now you encounter in in chapter thirteen, you know. The thing about it is, who you are seeing here now are 
both Jehu's grandson and Hazael's grandson. So Elisha now, who is also anointed here with Jehu and Hazael, the thing about it is Elisha has lasted three generations of men and is about now to die in chapter 13. You all understand what I'm saying? So there is no confusion in understanding scriptures. There were two Joash, both grandsons of the two men who God had sent Elijah the prophet before Elisha to go and anoint as kings, right? He says, anoint Jehu the son of Nimshi to be king over Israel and Elisha the son of Shaphat to be prophet in thy room in his stead and anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. So Hazael's grandson and Jehu's grandson are the two last kings here in the area of time where Elisha now is going to die right and that is the situation that's taken place so it just goes to show that god has set stuff up from way before things even happen god has just set it up he's just set it up you know there's no dispute about it. we're talking about years before as i said joash this joash who crying over elisha here he is the grandson of Jehu. so it's three actually three generations of men elisha has lived it through they have died and passed on they have died that's why these scriptures keep telling you that one died and the other one was in his stead one died and the other one is it but this last one the grandson now joash comes and meets elisha dying right he you know he's meeting elisha dying in in chapter 13. so let's just read on to chapter 19 just how because chapter 19 does now have all our verses again right just some Let's, let's go down here a little bit. So from verse 17 in chapter 19, it says, And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay. So God put these things in place for a purpose. Eh? And him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So he departed thence and found Elisha. So the first person that Elijah found or went to anoint was Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yokes of oxen before him, and he with the 12th. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. This must have been an awesome thing, you know. <laughs> and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said let me i pray thee kiss my father and my mother and then i will follow thee and he said unto him go back again for what have i done to thee what i do you i do you something who <laughs> does you come running behind me for and he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did it then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. The first thing I want to tell some of you guys here today is this. Right? When you see you are taking the path of Christ and this walk with Jesus Christ, burn everything. Burn everything that was previous in your life. Get rid of it. Start new. Start afresh. Get rid of the yoke. You see, the, you hear what, what going on? Is the yoke you're burning up. You see, you, you have to understand what the yoke is. The yoke is what keep you bound to the situations that you were experiencing all the time in your life. You know? So if you start to walk into Christ, and if it's the first time you're hearing me right now, and your life is about to change because of who Jesus Christ is and what we believe in, that he is responsible and his death, his burial, and resurrection is sufficient for your salvation. If you start to walk into Christ, everything that you have heard, what you were believing in, you have to burn that yoke, you know. Hear what I'm telling you guys here today. Burn the yoke that you have been bound to. You feel me? You gotta you gotta burn the past. You gotta get rid of the past, sever from the past to walk into the future. This is what turn completely around. Repent. Right? Not confessing or turn around. Change your direction right now. Alright, so we see that. And you know what this establishes? Imagine this. This man Elijah, right? Is plowing with a 12 ox. This had to be a large man. This this man had to be a large man physically. He is controlling 12 oxen on a in a on a yoke. The scripture saying one, two, three, four. 12 oxen on a yoke. You can imagine the pull that he is put. 
Listen, this had to be a large, powerful man. And he must have been. He must have. Come on. And Elijah, Elijah just comes and casts his mantle upon him. You know? And that was it there. You know? It's time to move. You know what I'm saying? Right now, the summer, you all outside there. It's time to move. It's time. As simple as I'm saying it here right now. Don't confuse simplicity for anything other than breakthrough right now. You hear what I'm saying? As simple as I'm saying right now, it is time to move. You hear what I'm saying to you right now? It is time to move. It's time to burn that yoke that you have been bound to, toiling, and move on to something new in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're moving on. Moving on. And you know, it should, we have an next area of scripture we should look at too. Eh? When Elijah died. When he not he died when Elijah was translated, right? Because the chariot came and went up. Because as we see here, if we go back to chapter thirteen now, right? Here what here what takes place with with um with with, with when the encounter came about with Joash and, and Elijah. Here what happened, right? Verse fourteen says, "Now Elijah was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died." And Joash the king of Israel came down on him and wept over his face. He said, "Oh my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horseman thereof." You know, so he came there and he was crying over Elijah's face. <laughs> the tears must have been falling on his face. And Joash is crying because Elijah is the last powerhouse standing for Israel, you know. You feel where I'm coming from? So if Elijah is out of the way, then all everything could come in like a flood. The enemy could come in like a flood. So Joash now as a young king now is crying because Elijah is about to depart. You know, sometimes they Persons who may have had the experience to make peace with persons right before they die, you know, and they say, Well, they leave it now. You know, I mean, I realize that they're going, you know, and to, today might be the last one. Well, it's the same kind of situation here. So he's, he's giving them the, the, the death cry, and he's, Oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. Turn to 2 Kings, turn to Second Kings 2. Turn to Second Kings 2. Turn back to chapter 2. Turn back to chapter 2. Right, so look at what's happening in chapter 2. Right, same second thing. See what's going on in chapter 2. In chapter 2, now Elisha is being taken by God. Right, so it starts in, in verses 1 and it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a woman that Elisha went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elisha said unto Elisha, Tarry, I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. He don't want to leave Elisha at all. Right? Elisha don't want to leave Elisha. And the sons of the prophet that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. So he said, Yeah, I know. So stay quiet with that. You know what I mean? And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry, I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul live, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elijah and said, him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. He said, Yeah, I know how going on, you know. So stay quiet. Right? And Elijah said unto him, Tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord had sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they two went on, so Elisha will not separate from Elijah. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went on and stood to view afar off, and they two stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and thither, so they, that they two went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah and Elijah asked, What I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee? Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion. Of thy spirit be upon me. That is a request. You see, let the double portion. So if you sitting on that good man, if you sitting on that good man of God, and you sit and you 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 being trained properly, it is nothing to want a double portion to continue the ministry. You, know? you feel where I'm coming from? You had to make your request known. I want a double portion of that anointing. You feel what I'm coming from? So he says this. He says, and he said, from verse 10, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, it had. Listen, I want you all to understand what I'm telling you. Some of the things that you all may be requesting and looking for in your life might be hard, you know. Listen to this verse. I said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. It might be hard 
or seem to be at some of the things that you're all asking or requesting or looking at or where your ambitions lie. But I'm telling you here today that it is not impossible. Do you hear what I'm saying? It might seem hard, but today, whatever it is you have been trying to gain, get, receive where your ambitions lie, what you're praying for for your children, I say that this is not hard. It might sound hard, it might look hard, but it is not impossible in Christ Jesus. So it is done. We declare it done right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. So from verses 11, it said, And it came to pass as they, they still went on, and they talked that before, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and a horse of fire, and parted them both asunder. Parted them both asunder. I mean, parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So they were walking and talking, and the chariot comes down and just takes Elisha. Oh, Jesus Christ! And just takes him into heaven. And Elisha sees it. He sees it. So you know what's going on when you see it. You know what's happening when you see it. Just like the word that I bring to you today. You know what's taking place when you start to see, when you start to when you start to receive it, when you start to get it. Eh? The portion going to fall upon your believer in Christ Jesus. Come on. The portion going to fall upon you. So he says that Elisha saw it in verses 12. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horseman thereof. And he saw him no more. Oh man. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent in two pieces. Elisha, when, when he sees it, he tears his clothes down. He rips it apart. The scripture says he tears it in two pieces. He rends it in two pieces. What are you reminding you of? Beloved believer in grace. You, you know that there was a veil blocking. Before Jesus Christ died. When he died that veil was torn. From the top the scripture says straight down to the bottom. Right? And Elijah ripped. The, the scripture says he tore his clothes. He tore, he tore the old so that he could put on the new. Hey, Jesus, he tore the old so that he could put on the new. Beloved believers in Christ Jesus, the new is what you're supposed to be wearing right now. You had to step out of the old. I'm telling you to step out of the old. What you were in before this minute here right now, Burn it, we say. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. I'm releasing you into a new atmosphere here today, you know. I'm releasing you by the power of the word of God today, you know. Don't let it burn. We ain't supposed to be wearing the old no more. No old covenant, no old testament, no old law, no old commandment, nothing like that. The scriptures reveal and speak itself. Open to us. He tore it when he saw Elijah go up. He tore it, he tore it, he tore it. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Today is the day for some of you all to believe, you know. So here what he says. Verse 13 says, He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? <laughs> Where well, and when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. So you know now the anointing upon him. You know now that the appoint the anointing upon him because God showed up for the very first request. And I'm telling you that God is about to show up for your very first request here right now. Where is the God of Elijah? Amen. Hallelujah. Where is the God? And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him they said to, the spirit of Elijah don't rest upon Elijah because he crossed the path of the Jordan in the same like manner as Elijah the same anointing come upon you double or say double say double or say double right now double or say double double or say double 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 right now in the name of Jesus right and they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him and they said on them, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. But let's go back to let's go back to the chapter 13. Because listen, 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 listen. You know this this excites me. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry about it, but it excites me. You know, that now the scriptures are so clear and could be applied to so many things that are taking place in our lives right now. Amen. So 
put on a new garment. Tell him we put on a new garment. We tear it off the old garment. Just say it right now, yeah. Let's put tear off the old garment. We tear it off the old garment because we put it on a new garment. It's a new garment. It's a new garment. It's a new garment. We wear a new garment today. New garment is Christ Jesus. The new garment is the blood of Jesus. The new garment. So immerse yourself into the blood and the word. You know? Immerse right now in a new garment. A new garment. A new garment. A new garment. New. We wear a new garment right now. We in a new garment right now. We in a new garment. Christ Jesus right now. Amen. 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 All right. So we back by chapter thirteen. You know, same chapter. Same chapter. Same chapter. Same chapter. Right? No, no, no. Because because of all what taking place, right? Because of all what taking place. No, no, no. Check. Look at what takes place, right? When Joash goes, that's why. That's why you had to see see when when Joash starts to cry over Elisha's visit. Elisha, you leave it before my father, my father. The child of Israel and your husband. It's the same. He's replicating what Elisha had done with Elijah, right? <laughs> what? But same kind of same kind of pattern tone. So Elisha says to him. He says, get a bow and a arrow. Get bow and arrow. And he comes with the bow and the arrows. And he tells him, you know, open the window to the east. He says, put your hands on the bow and the arrows. Now, you have to visually look at this, right? If he puts his hands on the bow and the arrow, this is the king, Joash. He has his hand on the bow and the arrow. One on the string to draw back, to release the energy. And one holding the projectile in place to guide the projectile. All right, because remember, an, a bow and an arrow is an intricate, properly correct weapon, mechanized mechanism to hurt and harm. So he tells Joash, he said, put your hands on Joash. No, the scripture says that Elisha then puts his hands on Joash's hands. So if he puts his hands on Joash's hands, if he comes to the front, right? No, we have to remember too that Elisha is on his deathbed and raises up. To handle this, he raises up the hands. To this, so it's either Joash is in the front time and he comes down and he puts his hand on the front where he's holding the projector and on the back where he's pulling the string of the bow. So it could be like this, right? It could be like this. Now, there are two scenarios, two, 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 two um, ways he can be over Joash. So it's either he's like this and praying and telling him to fire. Or he comes and he covers it. <laughs> you feel where I'm coming from? Because you remember I told you Elisha had to be a very large man, right? And he covers Joash. And he puts one hand upon the hand that is guiding the projector. And the other hand he rests on the hand that is drawing the bow. You feel where I'm coming from? Because I believe that if he was like this, there would have he would have had an impediment. All right, to release. But if he's like this, and he has his hands covering Joash like this, as Joash draws, Elijah's hand is about around there and around there, and and he tells him shoot. <laughs> what goes on? Remember, Elijah would not have been able to perform the feat physically. So Joash performed the feat physically, but Elijah was the spiritual strength before the shot. You get what I'm saying? The, the, the Elijah was the spiritual strength before the shot. And when the shot was fired, when the shot was fired, he said deliverance. He said the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And the arrow of the deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in effect. Till thou have consumed them. So he fired off that shot. And then he tells Joash, he says, take the arrows and strike the ground. And the scripture says, Joash strikes the ground three times. And he stops and he's just looking at Elisha like, what is this man telling me to do? What is this man telling me to do? Well, before we go any further, let me tell you all something here today. Today. Because, yes, I told you all to take off the old and put on the new. Put on that Christ right now. Say, Christ, put on the Christ right now. Say, Christ, cover me. I'm ready to leave the old life that I was in and walk into the new and wear the new. I'm ready to remove things that seem to have been hard and make it possible because of you. Come on, tell you something. You see, the actions of your now will determine your future. I'm thinking, hear me right now. The actions of your now 
will determine your future god is giving you the opportunity to determine your continue listen to what's taking place because i went through this with you before him uh, when 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 joash strikes and he stops at three looking at elisha elisha the scripture says that elisha was wrought with that you know elisha was the dead man the man that died get so angry he tell him he say well, what you doing why you didn't strike it five or six times why you didn't hit it five or six times so your enemies would have been consumed when you hit five or six times look at it's right there it's right there in, 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 in verses 18 he said verses 6, 19 he says and the man of god was wroth with him and said thou should have smitten five or six times then has thou smitten Syria till thou had consumed whereas now thou hast smite Syria but thrice only three times. The actions of your now today, right now, believer in Christ, will determine your future. You see, the enemy is not going to come at you once. No, the enemy ain't coming at you twice. The enemy ain't coming at you three times. The enemy is going to keep coming at you and keep coming at you and keep coming at you. So when you get the opportunity to create the deliverance and the disturbance in the atmosphere from the point where you are, take the opportunity to destroy the enemy at that point in time. So you have to be relentless when you are given the opportunity to determine your own future. To determine your own outcome you beloved believer in christ gonna be relentless to determine when you're ready to determine your event you see when you want to determine your own future you gotta be relentless in what you're doing you hear what i'm telling you till we th till we thoroughly consume them till we thoroughly 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 consume no 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 i want you to listen listen carefully to this because we're looking to wrap up here right um so elisha tells josh to strike on the ground Joash strikes three times and stops and looks at Elisha. And Elijah, the scripture says Elisha is so angry about it. But, but listen to me carefully. Listen, 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 listen. Joash, you see, sometimes the simple things, the silly things that we, is required of us from the things that are looking silly to us is what it is going to give you the breakthrough, you know, what is going to cause the turnaround and the deliverance to take place in your life, you know. Right? Because we find Jo Josh find that too simple. He tell me strike the arrow on the ground. What do I have to do with anything? He, and we constantly see that the silly things, the things that seem silly to us, the things that seem silly and simple to us are the things that are going to cause it to the wrong and the breakthrough. Remember the man? You remember the man? They told the man to go and Elijah tell the man to go and dip in the jaw seven times. The man find well that? How are you going to get healed with that? You know, God, God tell Moses, he said, talk to the rock, Moses, and strike the rock. What, remember Jesus when he put the, the mud on the man, and he tell him, go and wash, and you will see the blind man. We find those things too silly. We find it simple to be done. And the simple and silly things, or the things that seem to be simple in our lives, that the scripture requirement from us is what is going to give us the breakthrough and the turnaround to cause the deliverance and cause the crush of the enemy in your lives, even right now. It's like it's like you come, you come, you come to me with a problem, you come with an issue, and I tell you, pray about it. Or I tell you, I tell someone, I give somebody a call and I say, Yeah, what then increase your prayer life. You find that too simple. And it's the simple and the silly things that are going to cause the turnaround the breakthrough in your life. But what is you're looking for is some kind of necromancy and witchcraft to take place. What you want them to tell you, come with ten thousand dollars, work with five raw coconut, a bottle of coconut oil, and some mud, and let me put that on your thing, and that's where you like. When the simplicity in all things is what is going to cause the breakthrough and the turnaround in your lives. The things that seem simple, the things that seem silly. When we tell you all, make sure that you're giving correct. When we tell you all, make sure that you're praying. When we tell you all, make sure that you're fellowship right. When we tell you all, make sure that you all are, you all are in the presence of other saints. When we tell you all, release the old and just walk into the new. When we tell you all, don't apply the law to grace. When we tell you all these things, you all find it too simple. You all find it too simple, beloved believers. You know, it's these silly things that are going to cause all the breakthrough in your life from today in your mind just listen just just do this the simple things just do the simple things that's all you, you remember when you remember when god told moses to drop down the rod 
You remember when God told Moses to drop down the rod? Huh? The rod ain't had nothing to do with it, you know. It's a normal piece of wood, just like everything else. It is the fit in the obedience to the instruction that's going to cause your rod to consume everything else before you. You understand what I'm telling you guys here today? It's the faith that is going to make it happen. It's the faith that is going to make it happen. You see, when we tell people, when we tell people, all you got to do is believe in Jesus Christ and the work that Jesus Christ performed to be saved, they find it too simple like that, silly for people to get. It's the simplicity in the thing that caught. It's not what takes place in it. you believing as the faith you got to have in it for the thing to take place. So they get God wrath with you neither for that, eh? It's the simplicity in it. It's for who believes in that? For by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast, beloved believers in Christ. Come on. It's the simplicity in all things is what is required here. Let me just wrap this up for you. No, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Now, you know if you're a dumb number three or seven, so then you don't know what going on, right? No, you're off your seat and you're up in the air, you know, because God has a certain kind of anointing when the saints get together in a corporate body and atmosphere. Amen. So we're going to be stamping down the enemy inside of there today, you know. You feel where I'm coming from. Now, listen to me carefully. I just want to end this here, right? And this is an awesome thing. You know, remember I was telling you guys about, about these kids and them Friday night and the youth ministry and they were leading each other. One unable to see and one lead the one who can see is leading the other one through this obstacle course and literally they had to climb they had to get over they had to pass through you know to get from one point to the next and you know what i recognize the ones who were successful in getting through the obstacle course without any kind of injury were the ones who were listening and thoroughly blindfolded they were not trying to see they were totally dependent on their partner's voice to come through the obstacle course. Jesus Christ. The ones who were trying to peep found themselves hitting some of the obstacles and causing some trouble in their way going through. And you see, our lives, our lives, the path that our lives take are just like those obstacle courses. And if we allow Jesus Christ to lead us, if we allow Jesus Christ to lead us and not we of ourselves trying to see our way, we're going to make it through those obstacles in Jesus' almighty name. That's where it comes from, that faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. It doesn't have anything to do with what you see. It has to do with, with what he is leading you into. Amen, hallelujah. So let's be like those kids and let's just be obedient to the voice that is guiding us through. In Jesus' almighty name, I bless you all and I pray that God continues to navigate all of your steps, your thoughts, your, your ambitions. And I pray for breakthrough, healing, that anointing to be placed into the atmosphere and to cause the enemy and all of his altars to be demolished right now in the awesome and your mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. This is Pastor Solomon De La Rosa in God's grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, it was an awesome word, you know, an awesome word. I know I appreciate when God gives that kind of awesome word, you know, and I mean, um, I know that you all have been thoroughly moved. I know that you're all going to take off the old, put on the new, see things differently. Some of the things that you think were hard, you know that they are not impossible. They are possible through Christ Jesus. All right. I know that some of you all were looking at how simple certain things are. And that's all we need to get through with this, with this, um, this walk with Christ Jesus and not to navigate life circumstances. That's all you need. Right? Simplicity. Anything. You know, um, so we are about to partake of the communion here right now without any delay. And um, the scripture says, I'm just reading from the book of Leviticus for you all this morning. Right? I'm reading from the book of Leviticus this morning, from, this morning, from verses 18, chapter 17, verses 11. Right? I know a lot of people, I know a lot of new people looking in also, and we have such a, we have quite a lot of new people also with the congregation. So, um, Leviticus 17, 11 says this, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the order to make an atonement for your souls. Mm. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. The life of the flesh is in the blood, beloved believers. 
Life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Beloved believers, we are the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. With all its members in it. And without the blood, the life of the flesh will be no more. You all understand what I'm telling you today? As the body of Christ, you see Jesus and what he did for us, his blood, the blood by which we have been redeemed, the blood by which caused reconciliation, the blood which has paid for all sin, it is the blood that makes atonement. And we could not have the blood unless he had given his body. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the church is Jesus Christ. You hear what I'm telling you today? So in like manner, raise your emblems right now, the body and the blood. And Father God, we come before you, yielding ourselves in obedience to Lord God, to your word, to every thought, to every action of Lord God that you require from us. In the simplicity of all things, O Lord God, of all instructions, O Lord God, to depart from all things old, to tear off the old and put on in you. To come to God, O Lord God, only through you our intercessor father god through which also you know we claim healing we claim deliverance we claim breakthrough oh lord god we claim all things good and powerful we claim provision we claim success and victory over every circumstance and situation in our lives even right now we claim oh lord god that the enemy and all traps shall be removed from our parts and the parts of our children and our households and we give you thanks even right now for what you have done. For giving yourself on the cross. For breaking your body, O oh Lord God. So that we can have eternal life. And we thank you, Lord God, in remembrance. Knowing that you are coming again. We give you thanks. Amen. You may break and you may partake. Scripture says in the same like manner, we hear the cup. And the cup represents the New Testament in his blood. The New Testament. The new covenant. The new contract. In his blood. That's what the cup that you hold right now represents. So it binds. It, it seals. It redeems. It it's Jesus' blood. It's all powerful. And it gives life to the flesh. So wherever you needed that revival or that restoration right now in your circumstance or in your situations or you need that healing from cancer that you needed from, 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 from whatever sickness, whatever is taking place in your life right now, from, 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 from the back pains, from the diabetes, from the hypertension, from the worry, from the stress, from the hurt, wherever you need it right now, the life of the flesh is in the blood of Jesus. And to the church, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for your almighty work on the cross. We thank you for our salvation today. In Jesus' is almighty and in his master's name. You may partake. Hallelujah. Give God thanks and praise for each and every one of you guys. Come and join us. Number 307 Southern Main Road could appear. May God bless you all. If you're looking for avenues to support the ministry, contact us. I'm sure the number is on the screen. Come join and partner with us. This is Pastor Solomon De La Rosa in God's grace.
Deixa Deus. 